Hi, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to present you the project called Rusty Cogen GCC, which is a GCC Cogen for the Rust compiler. So, uh, as you probably know, the Rust compiler is based on LLVM. However, it provides an API uh, to plug other code generation. Uh, and that can be used, uh, for instance, to um, use GCC to generate the code instead of LLVM or CraneLeaf. Uh, and it's actually loading a shared library. And using that way, uh, I plug libgcc JIT to the Rust compiler uh, to provide a GCC code generation uh, using Rust-C. And as of uh, last year, this project was merged in the main uh, Rust repository. So uh, it's really uh, um, an important project because you might want to target more arch architectures from Rust, uh, architectures that are not supported uh, in LLVM, for instance. And uh, the project Rust for Linux uh, would want to use such a project to compile both the Linux kernel and uh, the Rust modules using the same compiler, uh, in this case, GCC. It can also be useful for embedded programming if you target some architectures that are not supported by LLVM. And some other projects like Firefox and LibreSVG uh, won't run on architectures that are not currently supported by Rust. So it's uh, really nice that we'll be able to achieve that in the future. So I'm going to present to you what is the progress that was made on this project since last year. So as I mentioned earlier, it was merged in the main Rust repository. Uh, we now have complete support for global variables. It used to be uh, hackish uh, as it uh, initialized them at runtime, but now they are initialized in static memory. So that fixed a couple of bugs uh, in the tests. We also now support 128-bit uh, integers. Uh, however, we don't support the NDNS correctly uh, for now. Uh, so if you use a, a big NDN architecture, uh, it's not going to work. But that's something uh, we're going to fix uh, in the coming year. We also improved the LUT DS SIMD support. We can compile uh, the STD Arch test for x86 and most of the tests in their pass. So I'm going to expand on that a bit later. Uh, one big milestone that we achieved this year is that we can now compile the Rust compiler itself using this code gen. Uh, and the resulting Rust compiler can uh, successfully compile a Hello World and run the, the Hello World program runs correctly. Uh, there, there's a couple of bugs that made it uh, impossible to compile some other uh, programs, but we're going to fix that uh, later. And also, uh, we can compile Rust for Linux. Uh, we can load the, the modules that are written in Rust, uh, compiled with this GCC code gen, and they uh, execute correctly. I will talk a bit about that later. Uh, it requires a few changes to the, to the GCC code gen, but nothing major, and we'll fix that as well. By the way, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to uh, interrupt me at any time. Other things that we implemented last year, uh, the, we, we improved the support for setting the alignment. Uh, we now support packed structures. Um, we made many improvements to inline assembly, and we now support symbol visibility. We support a few function and variables attributes. Uh, we implemented many uh, Rust intrinsics and SIMD intrinsics. And there were many crashes uh, both at compile time uh, in uh, libgcc JIT or at runtime that were fixed. So uh, the progress on the UI test, uh, th those tests are uh, tests that uh, compile a Rust program and checks the STD out and STDR. So um, the number of past tests increased by 461, and we have 50 less failures. So we're getting there. 
So of those failing tests, uh, most of them are related to SIMD. Uh, we got a few uh, assert failure in the, uh, in the tests that are using the allocator. Uh, there's a bunch of LTO tests that are failing as well because we don't support LTO yet. And there's a few uh, inline assembly tests that fail. And there's a bunch of other where we either sec fault or have uh, assertion failures. As for the SIMD progress, uh, we implemented the target specific uh, built ins supporting libgcc JIT. And uh, there was, there's probably going to be some work uh, needed there because it's uh, it's not as great uh, as I would like. Uh, but yeah, it's at least it's working. Uh, we also implemented the vector shuffle instruction in libgcc JIT. And for the uh, LLVM SIMD intrinsics, we got around 90% of them implemented for x86. I, I wrote on 90% because there's a few bugs in there that needs to be fixed. And uh, we got around 50% of the uh, Rust SIMD intrinsics that are implemented. So those are the result of running the STD arch test for x86. We only have 12 failures, so we're getting uh, very close to be able to have all of those tests pass. Uh, to make this work, uh, I had to write a bunch of GCC patches. Uh, most of them are for libgcc JIT. Um, we, we also have uh, one of them, the, the last one in this list, that was outside of it. Uh, it was fixing a a bug for some AVX built-ins when you were using the uh, Intel uh, assembly syntax. Uh, so it's it's pretty cool that two seemingly unrelated uh, open source projects could help each other that way by having the, the test of one uh, finding out a bug in the, in the other. Um, so since there was the release of GCC 12 uh, in May, uh, in the GCC code gen, I made a feature flag to be able to uh, use that specific uh, GCC release. Uh, if you don't use it, it will use the latest uh, project, my actual fork of GCC with uh, those patches that I've just shown in some areas that are not yet ready to be uh, posted on the mailing list. But yeah, that, that's a way to have uh, to, to use the GCC 12 release. Uh, of course, you'll have less features, uh, most notably, you won't have this in this port. Uh, but yeah, you can already compile programs uh, with them. So here's a summary of the features that are uh, implemented in the GCC code gen. So all, all the basic stuff like uh, variables and types and functions, that's all implemented. We also have uh, implemented a support for Atomix, uh, Tradable Storage, and Line Assembly. Uh, many intrinsics and SIMD intrinsics that were implemented manually because uh, there was no equivalent uh, in GCC to some of the LLVM intrinsics. The metadata that we can write in the object files. Uh, we support setting the optimization level. Also, if you want to try the, the GCC code gen right now, you can uh, do it without having to compile UCC yourself and installing at that project. You can try, try it in the Gutbold uh, Compile Explorer, so that's pretty neat. And uh, as mentioned earlier, we support backstroke, Salangman, symbol visibility, and function and variables attributes. We have 128 bit integers and SIMD support for x86. So what needs to be done? Uh, unwinding for panic support. Uh, we also don't have any debug info yet. And link time optimization uh, is not supported yet. Uh, we need to support the MDNS for non-native 128 bit integers. And uh, w since the goal of this project is to be able to use Rust on architectures that are not supported on LLVM, uh, it would be great to do that. And to do that, we need some work in the Rust compiler itself, uh, but also in some libraries like the libc and object crates. And um, 
we uh, need to support the uh, SIMD instructions for other targets than x86. So there's a bunch of uh, function and variable attributes that are not implemented yet, for instance, inline, to have a function that is gonna be inline. Uh, we don't support a couple of GCC constraint code in inline assembly. And there's also the, uh, we will also need to support even more when we add more architectures to uh, the Rust compiler. Uh, also, uh, we need to implement the target, the CPU target <laughs> detection to know, for instance, if some uh, SIMD uh, features are uh, implemented in the, comp in the CPU. And also, we'd like to do the distribution via Rust up of the GCC code gen so that it's easier for users <laughs> to install. So there's a, a couple of stuff that I'd like to improve uh, for this project, both on the Rust compiler side and on the GCC side. Uh, so for the, on the Rust side, there's an API uh, that is called Rusty Cogen SSA, uh, which is used by this project uh, to simplify the, um, the implementation of the project itself. So that's uh, the, the shared library that is uh, the Rusty Cogen GCC project. Uh, it's implementing this API, but it, it's most, um, it's closely related to the LLVM API. And there are some differences uh, with GCC that makes it a bit awkward to use. Uh, so for instance, in GCC, you have both R values and L values that are separated, while in LLVM is just a value. And so in some places in the API, I had to do unsafe casts in order to use it. So uh, it would be really nice to be able to, to have two separate types in the API so that I don't have to do, to do that stuff. It's the same for function, uh, where in the <coughs> VM it's also a value. Um, for uh, unwinding, uh, the, the Rust API used the lower level concept of landing pads, while in GCC, it's, uh, in, the, in its re intermediate representation, it's try catch, so it's much higher level. So it kind of ha have a, mitch a mismatch here. Uh, though I, I heard I heard that it's uh, that way in uh, the Rust API because it's also that uh, using landing pads in Mirror itself, the, um, the intermediate representation of the Rust compiler. So it might be a bit hard to fix. And uh, also the handling of uh, basic blocks in the Rust API is a bit him implicit. So when I had to implement some intrinsics uh, where I would add the jump, for instance, for a conditional, um, I would need to tell back the Rust compiler that I changed the uh, the basic the basic blocks. So it would be nice if there was a, something a bit better there. Also, the uh, GCC intermediate rep representation is more AST based, while the LLVM uh, intermediate representation is more instruction based, uh, and it caused some issues. Uh, for instance, I had a case where for the uh, loading of a value of a pointer, I was just doing the reference, but since I was not doing it like right now in the current basic block, it would end up in another basic block later and just uh, cause a sec fault because it was the referencing a value that was already freed. Also uh, in the Rust API, it provides uh, different operations for structs, arrays and vectors, but they are all in the same function while in GCC, it's different functions, so it, it would be nice to just divide that in multiple functions. On the GCC side, I'd like to improve the type introspection. For instance, if you have an integer type with some attributes, uh, you would uh, not be able to know if it's that integer type because like the pointers are different, so it would be cool if we had a better API there. Also, uh, it looks like the compilation time is uh, much slower than for the LLVM code gen. So that's something I'd like to investigate and improve. In the code that we generate for uh, uh, using the GCC code gen, there's some places where we miss some optimization. 
So that's something I'd like also to investigate. And uh, one thing that I've noticed but didn't really look at is that the binary size seems much bigger. So that's also something I'd like to work on. So there are two things currently that are needed to compile Rust for Linux. The um, CPU feature detection. Uh, so when I was able to compile Rust for Linux, I had to manually disable uh, some uh, CMD stuff. So if we uh, had that, it won't be needed. And also some uh, compiler flags, uh, like the, the one I was missing was for relocation model static. Uh, so what I did in, in the branch was just to, uh, when there's this flag, I would enable uh, the GCC flags, MC model kernel and FNO PIE. So uh, there's a bunch of potential issues that uh, we might have and we can talk about. Uh, for instance, the distribution of libgcc JIT. Um, since GCC targets a particular architecture, uh, we'll end up with like many libgcc JIT shared uh, library. So it would be great uh, if we can do better. Also, for now, it requires a patch GCC because there's a um, a couple of patches that are not merged yet, and there will be many others in the future. So I don't know if it's going to be a problem for us. Um, there's also a it, there's also different ABI in some platforms. For instance, uh, on some platforms there are 48 bit uh, function pointers. So probably if that's not supported by the Rust compiler, we'll need to do some work on that. Also, some people mentioned that they would like to have uh, the Rust-C target argument uh, that just work, for instance, if you use a, an architecture that is only supported by GCC and not the LVM uh, code gen. Also, we might want to backport uh, those patches to an older GCC, for instance, for the Linux kernel, because they, they support older GCC. One thing that would be very uh, interesting to do would be to run uh, the Rust test suite on new architectures, uh, namely their CI, maybe even a crater runs when we are ready to do that. Also, there is the uh, potential issue of target triples. Are they the same between GCC and LLVM? I'm not sure. Uh, and there will be like new target triples uh, since new architectures will be added. Um, so. How is it going to work in the Rust compiler? Uh, I don't know about that. We can talk about. Uh, if you want to help, uh, one easy thing you can do is to run the test of the project locally and check uh, the test that fail. Uh, and if you want to try to uh, understand why it's failing, that's even better. And it would be really cool. So if you can like fix the problem and send a pull request. Uh, also, if you want to support new architectures, you could do some work on the Rust compiler itself to add those architectures. And that would be, that would need some work on the crates object and libc. Also, you might want to try this project on new platforms and see how it behaves. And uh, if you want also, you can, compile some pro uh, programs and compare the assembly with LLVM to see if there's any mismatch or some missed optimization uh, that you find. And you can open an issue if you find one. And there's also a tag, good first issue on the GitHub project uh, that you might want to look at if you're uh, looking to start contributing to this project. So uh, I'd like to thank uh, to thank all of my sponsors and um, Linux Foundation for sponsoring me to come here, and also I'd like to thank all uh, of my contributors uh, that made uh, some big features in the project itself. So, do you have any questions?
So one thing that occurred to me with this project um, is that the difference between GCC and LLVM, just in terms of the way the front ends operate, are at different levels when they pass off to do. So Rust C goes all the way through, and then at the end of the day, it spits out LLVM IR. Um, whereas GCC, what the front ends usually do is sort of they spit out something that's much higher level before they pass it off. So I was wondering if you've experimented with the idea of hooking into Rust C earlier and passing off something slightly higher level to GCC to, just to see if that would make your integration easier rather than going through GCC JIT? Mm -hmm. So uh, I'd say for the m most part of it, it's not really a problem. The only thing that I saw would be for the uh, unwinding support. So the, the use landing pads, and it will be maybe if we were earlier in the Rust compiler, uh, would be able to have something more similar to try catch, which is what we have in Gimbal. Uh, so yeah, it would it would be interesting to look at that actually. What's your favorite part about working on the project? Uh, say that again? What's your favorite part about working on the project? Uh, I'd say, I'd say everything because uh, it, it was a great learning experience uh, of compilers. So Rust and GCC are both big projects. And uh, so it gave me like real world experience of working on compilers. Question about LTO. Uh, would that require support from the libgcc JIT side? I don't know quite how that would be structured. Uh, sorry, I don't so hear you. Time well. optimization. Uh, how, how could that work or would that work? <laughs> Okay, can you repeat the question? Then I don't hear. How would uh, link time optimization work? <laughs> you had that as a future feature. Feature is that something you would need support from on the libgcc JIT side with my libgcc JIT maintainer hat on. Yeah, um, I, I haven't tried yet, but uh, like adding the FLTO flag didn't seem to be enough uh, for making it work. Uh, so maybe there's going to need some work uh, in libgcc JIT to make that work. Maybe we should talk about that uh, uh, offline, as it were. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. And a, a vaguely related, um, a vaguely related subject, since libgcc JIT was originally in part implemented for Emacs 28, there, uh, there is, a, a sort of, um, there is a, crazy Emacs project which um, is, is attempting to re-implement Godbolt in, on the local machine, RMS Bolt. I don't know whether um, whether that supports this yet, uh, uh, whether that supports this yet, but if it doesn't, I intend to do add it. Because uh, it's very nice to be able to just type code on one, uh, in one window and see the, uh, uh, see the um, d disassembled output map line to line uh, um, to it in another window. <laughs> Uh, sorry, I, I didn't oh, get that. <laughs> blasted masks. Um, I'm just ju just noting that uh, 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 that it, since Godbolt is apparently supports this, um, if RMS Bolt doesn't support it, I'm tempted to add it. Uh, doesn't support what? R if RMS Bolt doesn't support uh, this project, I am tempted to add tempted to add support support to that as well. It's quite possible nothing will need to be done because it's just another backend. For, see uh, I have a hard, a hard time understanding. Uh, Sorry, I, I think I can't enunciate properly through this mask. Oh. Uh. Oh, uh, you were talking about Goodbold? Uh, okay, uh, I don't know about any alternative to good world, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm just curious, like, if you have high-level thoughts. This is also half for the previous presenters. Between the, the, two, the two approaches uh, to GCC. Uh, say that again? Uh, I was just curious about your high-level thoughts on, like, the two approaches to uh, yeah, GCC. You mean the difference between the two, or...? Um, yeah. 
just a high level like advantages specific. okay uh, yeah good question so uh, the gcc rs project is a gcc front end so it's all implemented in gc itself uh, in c++ while this uh, gcc code is implemented in the rust compiler so it reuses the uh, rust uh, front end and plugs the uh, gcc to it yeah that makes sense i was curious uh do you see like so you get to share more code with rust c because of this yeah is, i guess is there like a disadvantage or do you just think it's a uh sorry <laughs> uh, that allows you to share more code with rust c right um i'm just yeah. curious if you think there's uh, any disadvantage to that approach or, or just curious about thoughts? So, um, as we mentioned a bit when I, we were talking with Philip, uh, there's like the unwinding support that might be a bit hackish uh, because uh, in uh, the, the API of Rust, it's using landing pads, which are much uh, lower level than uh, what we have in GCC Gimple, uh, which is the repository intermediate. And, in terms of representation of GCC, uh, in the, in Gimple, you use try catch, so it's going to be a bit hackish using this API. But apart from that, uh, I don't really see any disadvantage to you using the Rust SQL base. Uh, one question about uh, quick one about the, the same as Philip asked, or sorry, but I, we asked we talk about the flags, the, the flag support and. Uh, is there any flag that you think would be hard to support uh, because of live GCC GIT? Some flag that Rust support that, uh, yeah. So um, in live GCC JIT, you can just specify any GCC flags. So if you know the mapping between the, the mm -hmm. what is used in Rust and GCC, it's not a problem. Okay. Thank you. When you're when you're building crates with Rust C, it spits out R libs today, right? Does that uh, does do the same thing? I say that again. When you build with Rust C, it spits out special like R lib files. Mm -hmm. uh, does this do the same thing, or do you get because you know, because aren't R lib files Rust specific or Rust C specific? Um, I'm not sure actually. So I generate object files. Uh, I don't know if they are um, um, like put together in those Orlib file. I, I believe those are archives. So yeah, I, I don't really know about them in, enough to answer that question. So, but you don't you don't use Orlib files then? You just spit out or you just generate object files? Uh, uh, yeah, generate object files. Yeah. yeah okay. Thank you.